arithmetic and geometric sequences, identifying and writing an explicit rule. <coughs> the sequences below are either arithmetic or geometric. For each sequence, determine whether it is arithmetic or geometric and write the formula for the nth term, a sub n, of that sequence. <coughs> so I need to look at each of my sequences here, and the first thing I need to do is decide if they're arithmetic or geometric, because that is going to affect the formula that I write for the nth term here. <coughs> so if I'm looking at this first one here, negative 20, negative 10, negative 5, it's if it's arithmetic, I will be adding or subtracting the same thing every time. So Let's try that idea first. To get from negative 20 to negative 10, I would have to add 10. To get from negative 10 to negative 5, I would have to add 5. So since I'm not adding the same thing every time, once I add 10 and the next time I add 5, this one is not arithmetic. Um, for it to be arithmetic, I would have to be adding the same thing every time. So we know it has to be geometric, which means that I have to be multiplying by the same thing every time. So, or dividing, okay? So to get from negative 20 to negative 10, I would divide by, ne uh, divide by a positive 2. However, when we're talking sequences, um, we never talk about the common ratio in terms of divide. It's always multiplying. So instead of divide by 2, I would write this as multiplying by 1 half. Half of negative 20 is negative 10. And then half of negative 10 is negative 5. So the common ratio here for my geometric sequence is 1 half. Okay, so now that I've determined that this one is geometric, I'm going to write the explicit formula. Now, in order to write the explicit formula, I need to know two things. I need to know, first of all, what the common ratio is, okay? We just figured that out, it's one half. I'm gonna substitute that in right there. And then I also need to know a sub one, or what's the first term in my sequence. So negative 20 is my first term. I'm going to substitute that in right there. So my explicit formula is going to be a sub n equals, instead of a sub 1, I'm going to substitute in the first term. And then I'm going to multiply, instead of r, I'm going to put in my common ratio. And then my exponent is n minus 1. And I'm done. Okay, so for the next one, a very similar process. Okay, first I need to decide if it's arithmetic or geometric. And um, I need the same two pieces of information. I need the start value, which I already have as 6. But then, um, if, it's a, if, it, if this one is also geometric, I need to know the common ratio. If it's arithmetic, it will be the common difference. So if we look here, let's start with adding or subtracting again. To get from 6 to 2, I would have to subtract 4. So let's see if that keeps going. 2 to negative 2, I would subtract 4. So it looks like this one is arithmetic because I'm adding a negative 4 or subtracting 4 to get from one term to the next. And so my common difference is negative 4. Okay? So now I have the two pieces of information that I need. I'm going to put this negative 4 in place of the D, the common difference. And I'm going to put the 6 in place of a sub 1 as the first term in my sequence. So my formula is going to be a sub n equals, instead of a sub 1, I'm going to put 6. Instead of d, my common difference, I'm going to put negative 4. So in fact, I'm going to erase this plus, put minus 4 times n minus 1. Now, when we do arithmetic formulas, we usually have a little bit of simplifying to do after this. 
So what I need to do now is just distribute this and combine my like terms to clean things up a little. So this is going to be 6 minus 4n, and then negative 4 times negative 1 will be positive 4. So I have one variable term, negative 4n, but I have two constant terms that I can combine together. So 6 plus 4 is 10. So my formula for my arithmetic sequence here is a sub n equals negative 4n plus 10. And my geometric one was a sub n equals negative 20 times 1 half to the n minus 1 power.